9-24, March 23rd, 2015. Discuss, take action on Texas Historical Commission, Historical Commission Funding Agreement, Attachment A, Attachment A, Source of Funds Statement and Verification. Okay. Did y'all review this? Have a chance to? What was the total project cost on the, on the whole courthouse? Is the it, whole courthouse? Is it it says the estimate total project cost is this what it is? One million four hundred and something. That's what it is. What were we at on money wise was it? We don't know. Yeah. Tom Tom is not here right now. Um, so this is uh, this is working toward our four hundred and fifty thousand dollar grant. So that four hundred and fifty is gone already, so we haven't gotten it yet. Um, that's what we have to send that in. E, a resolution supporting the efforts of Wilson County to execute restoration of the Wilson County Courthouse. <clears throat> okay. A resolution supporting the efforts of Wilson County to execute restoration of the Wilson County Courthouse, whereas the historic county courthouse, <clears throat> having served the county since its first official commissioner's court meeting, is in need of repairs and upgrades, and whereas the county submitted an application in Route 8 to the Texas Historic Courthouse Preservation Program seeking funding assistance for the rehabilitation restoration work described in the master plan. Whereas the proposed project has been selected to receive a THCPP grant award in the amount of $450,000 by the Texas Historic Commission. The state agency administering the THCPP contingent upon <coughs> compliance with the terms of the funding agreement to which the document is attached. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Commissioner's Court of Wilson County, Texas, affirms by this vote its willingness to accept the funding award to contribute the funding necessary to complete this project, to enter into the aforementioned funding agreement, and to hereby declare its complete support for its important project to preserve the Wilson County Courthouse for future generations. Resolved this 23rd day 
of March 2015. On this, uh, before we make a motion, Judge, yes. uh, on this funding agreement, I haven't got a, a copy of what was on that funding agreement, but does this give the authority also to give the right of way of the courthouse or not? We've heard the easement talking no, about the No, it's a different thing. Like if uh, something should happen after everything is done, do we do we have a right to go in there and fix it ourselves or we have to stop it and, and, and get an okay from the historic commission? We have to, from my understanding, anything that we do that applies to that, we have to have their blessing. Because I didn't, see, I didn't see an agreement with that. That's why I was saying that. that uh, we have to discuss that. Else the, the, the agreement indicated that, or I thought it indicated that they had agreed with our master plan, and the master plan was presented by the architect, uh, stating that we were going to do certain things, but that we were not going to comply 100 percent to the, you know, the old story that uh, Ray used to tell about having a certain kind of pine wood. It had to be that right. exact type of wood. Uh, we're not taking that directive and approach. So the fact that, that what we're doing is in compliance with our master plan would suggest to me that as long as we stick to the master plan as presented by the Thorn Group that we're okay. If we do something outside of that, then that would probably have to be approved because it would be an addition or a change to the master plan. Are you talking about repairs later down the road? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think as long as we have taken accept this grant, it applies to the same thing. We have to stay as close to the original courthouse as possible. If it was original type work that we're, re we're redoing, some of it's like the roof has already been redone, some of the other stuff, that didn't apply because it had already been changed. But if we get into something that is well, that's what original, uh, we have to do it back as, ne as near original as possible. If it's not major, I'm just saying that we don't have to get permission from there until we're going to say the paint starts peeling off or something and we have to repaint it again. We have to go back and tell them, you know what, we're going to have to use it. You probably read more of both. I yeah. haven't seen those documents. I, don't see much um, I, I know that part of this involves some sort of easement, but as far as the actual agreement in those documents, I don't think my office has seen anything. I think as long as we got agree with Commission Wally, as long as we stay within the master plan that was presented to them, Okay. We're not part of if we do anything other repairs that the historical commission has one effect. Yeah, that that was the conversation from the first because right. everyone was frightened as to right. what the historical group might do and we didn't want to sell our souls for four hundred well we didn't know how much it was going to be at that point for four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. And again I think the fact that they agreed to the master plan puts us in pretty good shape as long as we stick to that with any future uh, things we need to do. I don't foresee a problem. don't know that for sure. that on most of these items, 
there is not a number one or a number two item. When you're talking materials, it varies. Uh, what might be the preference in precinct four could easily not be the preference in precinct one because of the different locations and logistics and so forth. And that even though you have a, a bidder <coughs> that gave you a lower amount for, say, a ton of base material, there are other things that come into play that you have to consider. Location for one. Uh, speaking for precinct four, I have a, a precinct that's pretty well spread out. I'm all the eastern part of the county, kind of shaped like an hourglass, and I go within a mile of Bear County, so it's kind of spread. So if I'm working on the western part of my precinct or the eastern part of my precinct, things change. The What might be a better price per ton is not a better price because I have to consider dump trucks and labor, cost of fuel, and efficiency of time. So go through all that to say that from when I went through this after talking to Ms. Chapman, um, I either looked at one, in my opinion, and said no, <coughs> these people because of price or whatever didn't work, and then I prioritized the other ones, one, two, three, and four. Uh, there, there is no, if, if we're going to pick a single bid, then it's going to have to be a different bid per precinct. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's the conversation that we had. She understood that there are a lot of variables that have to be considered. The other part of it is, is that there are times that you can go to, you know, my top two are GEM and uh, Brontex, <coughs> and there are times that you need material and you, you need three quarters to dust or an inch and a half to dust and depending on what it is that you're doing. And GEM or Brontech might be out. And then you have to move to the next one because when the work needs to be done, the work has to be done. As, as much as the weather and the number of employees will, uh, will allow. So I agree with you 100% of it. All the reason, I mean, I've been doing a lot of work on painting and everything, and sometimes I get material from one place and they don't have it. I have to wait two or three weeks before they can start making some, but I go to a different material agency and they have it, so I have to go and get it. Regardless of the price, once you start, you need it right away. Yeah, particularly when you're paving. You know, you're paving. the year before last, uh, we were working on paving 307, had the road ready, had it primed. <coughs> We're about to pick up the wash rock, and I make a call, and we don't have any wash rock. Wait, you, you got to. You know, well, tell me who you think might have it, and they give me a couple of names, and so you call around. Some of it's just the time because yeah. you can't. It doesn't work. It's not allowed. Um, the, the big concern I have is the, is the freight because. My precinct, I'm the furthest away. Precinct one and, and maybe precinct four may have the lowest price, but my it's only double my price. Right. Yeah, well, the whole, I, I agree. Now, this whole process has been a great process. Yes. I mean, you, you can look now, and you've had some people who who have uh, been very competitive, and how they put this all together. So the pro the process is great uh, because if you can't go to your preferred then you know what price is quoted by the next one. And we didn't have that before. And from a freight standpoint, we've hauled most of ours. Um, but when you get to those big projects and you need them, now you can go to this list and say, okay, let me go to, you know, freight's on further down, but I know uh, um, there was a file group out of Floresville that quoted a good price. There were uh, tally uh, quoted some that that look good. Sea trucking looked good, but they only quoted precinct two. two. Um, and so, uh, I would I would make a motion to accept all this. Uh, we can do that. I would 
Okay, before we get there, this, okay, I just uh, mentioned uh, A, when I read the agenda item, this would be A, material, B, hauling, C, material plus hauling, and D, fuel. Fuel. That's correct? Right. Okay. I know that's common in a lot of other counties yeah. according to the county auditor. Um, so, yes, I'm going to second that motion. Okay. Uh, motion by Commissioner Donnelly, second by Commissioner Wright. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Here. And then I need one of those charts that y'all have if you're here. Okay. Everything's here. Okay, item number 13, the Ann Hosha Emergency Management Coordinator. A, discuss to take action on the proposal from CDC regarding the bridge. Uh, 347 County Road Bridge Widening Project to be considered as the equivalent match project to a text dot off system bridge project on County Road 348. And I believe we're going to table that. Dana said she hasn't had enough time to. I have not had enough time to read the agreement. So I'll well, check with This is a suggestion, Leanne and Commissioner Morales. Y'all may check with the River Authority because one of the projects I did. They get engineering service for me and this design and we didn't call the county in time. So we'll maybe just give them a call and see if they will work on this project. Okay. So I see it's part it says you know they got a coordinate on, with the sample on their, recording. On their yeah. So they might help you out. Okay. Uh, I get a motion to table 13A. A motion by Commissioner Morales, a second by Commissioner Goddess. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Put it on the next Commissioner Fourth agenda. Yes, that should be the judge. Okay, B, Cleveland's Corner Subdivision, review and approve, one, review and approve final plan, and two, discuss and take action on the acceptance of letter of credit, uh, 10500 Okay, on the plat, we've got a uh, subdivision plat for uh, commercial development. It's four lots at the intersection of 775 <coughs> and 34 and 32. It's been before the Development Review Committee and given a favorable recommendation. The developer is here, Mr. Cleveland, if anybody has any questions of him. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed?
Do we get to keep these pens? Sorry. No, I just turned these. You're the fun guy. Edmund Baker Health and Public Safety, a update on Southern Springs Volunteer Fire Department. To bring the court up to date, uh, last week the judge and I met with uh, the president and the fire chief from Southern Springs, had a uh, long conversation about direction of what to do, where to go, how we're going to go about doing that. Uh, and judge, correct me if I miss any of this. <laughs> uh, more, more or less, we uh, uh, it, it's, it's pretty much a understanding that there isn't any volunteers or enough volunteers in that area at this time to continue Sutherland Springs Volunteer Fire Department as we've known it and known it in the past. Um, you know, they, they did a, 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 I guess you'd call it a heroic effort after some of the issues that happened back in the early 90s, mid 90s. Uh, and bringing it back, it just volunteerism is just going out throughout the United States. Uh, it's, it's not uncommon. Everybody's suffering from it. Uh, mainly it's going to end up being a cost impact somewhere down the line to somebody. Uh, we agreed that uh, we're not going to take any action at this time to uh, do anything. We're, we're, the judge had some new ideas. Some other people had called in and said, can we? And, and we're, we are investigating and going through checking out those options and see if they're viable and see if it's something we can do. Hopefully, the only effect that it'll have in the Southern Springs community will be volunteers, and you know, cover that by Stockdale and Lavernia fire for until you know, until we can get somebody trained up in that area to to work the work and to help out. And uh, this is a countywide problem. It's not just Southern Springs. It's just most of us haven't had it hit at one time. We got a couple of smaller departments that are suffering from volunteers, not having enough volunteers as it is. And uh, don't know where it's going to go from here. We'll have to see. But we're not going to take any action right now. I just wanted to give you all an update. We're still working on it. Thank you. Okay. Item 15, John Hokum, IG, discussion and potential action regarding local telephone service contracts. Okay, we uh, got with the mayor's office. I can show you uh, the county attorney's office. Uh, these are the uh, contract, and basically it's a one-year contract with uh, Verizon for local telephone service wherever we have analog telephone lines, and uh, it. Uh, uh, what would anyone like to look at the uh, <coughs> the line lists? That's all the different <coughs> accounts that we have, yeah. and uh, we, we have uh, several accounts with Verizon uh, and uh, so any landline phone service. Basically, any landline in the county. Uh, this would affect uh, 
your yards where y'all have a uh, uh, landlines, say your yards, and nothing would change with your phone service other than entering into a contract. Same, Same would happen at the, the uh, yes, sir. Same would happen at the uh, sheriff's office where you have uh, landlines. The landlines won't uh, change at all other than being in a contract for for one year. This looks like first you got to have all the taxes that are added on, but it looks like a significant discount compared to what. We currently pay it. To yes, sir. Well, the, the flat rate, could you inform me about what the flat rate was and what it's going to be? Yes, it was $34.75. It's going down to $23 per line. And that is how many lines again? 63, I believe. So that's going to be a significant savings. About $13,000, right? Yes, sir. Is there, I mean, it's great, but do they say why it's going down? Oh, just because we're entering into a contract. We haven't had alliance in the contract in the past. So by going into a one year contract, they've reduced the rate. You did hurt. You know, no, with East by, did that have anything to do with it? Yes, sir. It did? East by is the ones who, uh, who found the uh, uh, pay savings, and that's the. Uh, that's their uh, chart. Would you like to review it? No, it's fine. I don't see any reason not to go forward with that. Me either. Do you want to oh, the what I passed out? Here. 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 There you go. Okay. Yes, we actually negotiated down from a five-year contract. One, that's fine. I'll make a motion. Motion with Commissioner Gomez. Second by Commissioner Wiley. All in favor? Uh, All right. Any opposed? Good job, John. Thank you. Okay. okay. Item 16, Dan Hartle County Treasurer. Discuss and take action to go out to bids for depository contracts. Still have some CDs. 
under them and they mature, we're putting them into <coughs> the um, general fund under a, um, a line item that Tom has developed uh, to put these closed accounts under. Nikki, we haven't made any payments on your equipment that was going to send the first one. Item 18, Vicki Mills, Human Resource Specialist, Payroll and Personnel Changes.
Thank you. Motion, Commissioner Gomez. Second, Commissioner Paul. All in favor? Aye. Uh, okay. Nineteen. Yeah, she should be on the right. Yes, sir. She be on the right. Tom Duke and Kelly Oscar Bill. <coughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll get all excited. No, 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 no,